Look at the two of us, straight to see. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. So glad y'all could join me today and help me. Um, get some of my anxiety off because y'all know if I don't y'all might catch me out here wilding but anyway I wanted to first let me give a condolences to uh, Bart Starr obviously I didn't know that he passed one of the Packers greats uh, quarterbacks um, the legend when they think about the Green Bay Packers y'all already think about Bart Starr well, I appreciate Bart Star for all the work that he's done with the ranch. Um, I have a few young men that um, that was in our facility that uh, were released from the ranch. And what I thought was a good program for young men, uh, Bart Star would take troubled youth. Trust me, I know, because there was a few troubled youth in my neighborhood. And that's one of the reasons why I continue to support the Bart Star Foundation, and the, uh, the it was the ranch actually, uh, and I continue to support them even as an adult because I had so many uh, friends in my youth who ended up in Bart Star's uh, ranch because of their behavior, or should I say, lack thereof. Um, but they ended up in the ranch like Ronnie and Pedro, <laughs> Mark. Uh, what's the little one's name? Mark and Darren. All those guys that ended up um, basically in the ranch. Uh, Bar Star gave something for inner city kids that a lot of people didn't do way back in the day. He took them, showed them how to work on cars, showed them um, you know, so what the people would do. You would donate your vehicles to the ranch, the ones that you didn't need, or you know, ones that you you know just wanted to write off. And what would happen was Bart Starr and the boys would put together these trucks and these cars. And it was a really good thing because it taught them a skill. And a lot of them, when they got out of their situation, they had a skill to rely on once they was um, entered back into society. So that I always respect Bart Starr and the Ranch and uh, the Green Bay Packer organization for a lot of work that they do off of the field once their playing days are over. Okay. Shout out to you too, Donald Driver. I see you. Um, but I, what I want to talk about today is I'm going to do a couple videos. One of them is going to address what I said about black women being aggressive and um, how people are, you know, making the comments, you know, that why are black women so aggressive and yada, 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 which I think is such, you know, maybe on one hand it has some uh, validity to the people that are speaking it, but maybe for us it does it has no relevance. And when I say us, I mean, uh, you know, females. That, that doesn't have, you know, it doesn't really have any kind of effect because we know that there was no difference in the treatment whether you were male or female, if you were enslaved. So the fact that you would even say something like that, to me, uh, it needs to be addressed again. And trust me, I will. I don't know when, but I, I, I'll, I'll get to it. The main thing I wanted to talk about today is, uh, as y'all know, there's a lot of gentrification going on in my neighborhood. And... Um, it's almost like I don't know it anymore. Once you start seeing these bicycle lanes and uh, white women walking down the street at 12 o'clock at night and none of these Negroes better not think about touching her as she's doing the walk. And But I know people that will walk down the street in the middle of the night and they won't make it to the morning. So with that being said, um, I'm looking at this whole gentrification thing a lot different. I'm looking at it uh, like my man Walter Lee Hampton said. Uh, some of you niggas 
Y'all just don't want to do right, and you just don't want anything. And I'm saying that not to be vulgar, not to be, you know, hurtful. But at some point, when do you have an accountability to yourself? Um, I'm watching white men and white women getting up out of their out of their uh, beds, out of their houses when they see crime taking place. Something that we never did. You can go look at Shea Show over there across the street, um, across the street, across the water in Michigan, over in Detroit, and see how when the squatters take over his property and when he asks neighbors what happened, have they seen anything? The first thing they go, I ain't seen nothing. No, I don't, no, I don't know nothing. But they know they saw somebody break in your house. See, this is the kind of behavior that I, I don't condone. This is the kind of behavior that you can't blame on slavery. This is the kind of behavior that's going to be directly affected by how you was raised, the uh, complete lawlessness of your family. Because some people, you know, break the law, but they know they're doing wrong. And their parents teach them right from wrong. And they just choose to do whatever the hell they choose to do. We're talking about a whole different entity out here. Um. And fortunately, for the people that live on Holton Street, they stop about three or four carjackers or car robbers right there on the street. Now, I've been living about three blocks away from there for a long time. And my voice was a lone voice crying in the wilderness, mine and a few other people, in terms of talking about what are we going to do black men about this crime going on in our neighborhoods? Well, I don't have to ask that question no more because the people that are moving in the neighborhood, they're showing you what they're going to put up with. And it ain't too much from your black brother. They ain't putting up with it. So today they had a whole bunch of them lined out there on the street in handcuffs, called the police because these guys were breaking in cars. Mm. You think I feel bad for them? Most certainly do not. Most certainly do not, because there's an element in this community that must be stopped. Y'all won't do it. The men folk won't do it. They expecting the women to do it. The women tired because they, they do enough and they raising the kids too. Then they got to go out there and fight the battles. It's an insane proposition, people. So what I'm saying is we need to get control of our behavior. I know poverty breeds crime. I'm well aware of that. I'm well aware of that. Poverty be, breeds crime. It's not the other way around like the police like to say, well, uh, 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 crime breeds poverty. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, so whenever you go to any community in any country and you go to the trap section, you go to the low-down section, you see how much crime you see. Whenever I go to a country... I always tell them to take me where the natives are. If I'm wherever I'm at, show me where the grassroots live, and they'll take me. I remember I was in the Bahamas once. I had this uh, show, this driver named Boxer, uh, and a Boxer was fascinated with me. He was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I just want to know how the real people live, not this tourist shit." You know, now I don't want to see that. Or oh, I'm here performing, and you showing me. The, Find us out. I want to see how low it go. Excuse me. And usually when I see that, I've had my feel because I've found come to find one thing to be true. And I don't care who you are and where you've been. And I dare you to argue with me this point. Ghettos are the same all over the world. Everywhere you go, you can go to Singapore, you can go, I don't care where you go. Ghettos are all the same. They all stink, and they're all full of crime. They stink, and they're full of crime. The only people can do anything about that is the people that live in those areas. Yeah, they need a little help, but it's first got to start with self-accountability and self-responsibility. If you're not willing to go that extra mile and you just won't give your problem to an entity to come and fix, it's going to be a little difficult. It is.
because we got to take some responsibility. We're not responsible for the cards we dealt. If you're playing spades, and for those, all my spade players out there or big wits players, you ain't responsible for the cards you dealt. But how you play them at hand and make them books, that's all on you. It is. It really is. I don't know. T tell me what y'all think. Maybe I'm going a little bit too far. You know, after you live a little while, you get a little jaded. I hope to God I don't. I want to always stay fresh and thinking fresh. But, you know, I could be a little jaded. But that's really how I'm feeling this morning. And I want to know what y'all think about this. You know, what do y'all think about uh, people complaining about gentrification all over the country? Yet and still, when these people come into this area, in these areas, the crime rate drops. Look at that. There it is on TV right there. Can you see it? Is that it? The damn homeowners out there chasing the doggone people, putting them down on the street. That's not far from where I'm at. Okay? All right. So these people ain't no better. They're no more special. They're no more. Uh, they got the same two eyes, uh, nose, and two ears that you have. And whatever you want to do to really stop something. You can make it happen. Yeah, that is it. See them running down the street? That's the people running. Watch the neighbors get their asses. Look at that. Look at this crazy. Look at that. Women, the women, and the men, and the dog. Y'all keep on playing. Keep on playing. Thinking people going to have mercy on your condition. When you keep self-perpetuating death and, and degradation. It just don't work that way. I'm going to go. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share, come hang out with me, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Okay? Tell me what y'all think now.